What is up, heroes? This is Manny Drew, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we absolutely crushed it with the Sigma End and found out our cybernetic... 100% intentional. Uh, that Found out that Sigma has cybernetic arms and then proceeded to crush them in another timeline. And now we're experiencing the aftermath. I'm hoping that we'll be able to find out more about Quark after waking him up with the Accelivere that we got back from Dio. And then we'll go on to find out more about Luna, but we will see. Hmm? Sigma! 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 Uh, Finally awake, huh? Where am I? I rubbed my eyes and slid my legs off the bed to stand up. Well, to be honest, it was an examination table, not a bed. Which meant... The infirmary, huh? I guess they carried you out here after you passed out. Oh, Alice! You guess? Well, I wasn't there to see it. I was out, just like you. But I was in the AB room. Why? That Baka K. He punched me in the stomach, so he did do that. I can't believe him. He didn't want me voting, so... Whoa. And after he knocked you out, he voted Betray, which brought his BP up to 9. Yes. So, where is he now? On the other side of the number 9 door. With Dio. You told him to go, remember? Oh, yeah. Is your arm okay? Arm? I heard what happened. Cybernetic arms, huh? Can't say I'm surprised. I was starting to get a feeling something was up with you. I looked down at my left hand. Or rather, I looked down at where my left hand should have been. Instead, there was a stub wrapped in white gauze. I told myself I'd do anything to get the cure, even if it meant letting Dio betray me, but I had a feeling I might come to miss my hand. Oh yeah, how's Quark? I'm right here. Oh, that's exciting. Quark. Man, I'm glad you're alright. Feeling better? Yup. Thanks to you. You got the medicine from that jerk Dio, right? Luna gave it to me and now I'm better. Thanks. You're the best, Sigma. Oh, oh, so precious. You saved my life. That's what we did it for, to protect that smile. It seemed they'd shared stories while I was asleep. Everyone knew now how I'd made a deal with Dio, and about the journal we'd found with the Latin in it. Clover and Fi seemed to have done most of the talking. It was completely the opposite of what we guessed. We're not infected, the rest of the world is. That means this place isn't a quarantine facility, it's more like a shelter. Well, we don't know anything for sure yet. I thought the same thing you did, but then Sigma pointed out a couple discrepancies. Yeah. Fine, I have already gone over it, but... I explained what I noticed. One, if we were in a shelter for uninfected people, why had Quark been infected? Any place designed to keep a virus like that out would have a lot of safeguards to keep anything from getting in. Had the virus really bypassed all those measures? It didn't seem likely. 2. The timing of our abductions and the pandemic's outbreak was strange. It would make sense if we'd been rescued after the disease had become widespread, but that wasn't what had happened. First we'd been abducted, then the pandemic had broken out. 3. We didn't know why Zero had put us in the nonary game. If we were survivors he wanted to protect, then why try and kill us? If we were in a shelter, why wasn't it safe? 
Maybe someone anticipated the pandemic. I don't know who. Probably zero. Anyway, they grabbed us before the pandemic really started. Then they put us in the shelter. But then after a while he got bored, so he decided to have us play this game to kill time. <laughs> Who on earth would make people he rescued play a game where they could die just because he was bored? Well, we don't actually know if there is poison in this bracelet. What? You're the only one who's gotten injected so far. And when you did, it was only Soporil. What are you saying? That what I did at the number 9 door was all pointless? No, that's not what I mean. Yeah, clearly that's not what she means. It means you don't know whether or not there was poison that would have been injected. And given that there was a good chance in your head, you decided it was likely given the risk of not taking such a threat seriously was death. That losing your hand was worth protecting the potential, uh, you know, your own life, right? That can't be it. I'm sure there's tubocurine in the bracelets. The Adam's analysis confirmed it. Dang, this this Adam is good. But what if the Adam is lying? If you're going to do that, then we don't have anything to base any speculations on. You could say the newspaper article was fake, or that the Latin journal wasn't real. Or the journal was real, but my translation was a lie. You made it up? No. My translation was accurate. I'm just making the point that once you start talking about the stuff being fabricated, it doesn't stop. What? I don't think I've ever heard this phrase before. I don't think Zero's doing this just to take the piss out of a lime. What? Eh? <laughs> uh... I was just trying to stress that I don't think Zero would do this to pass the time. How do you make that mistake? However, I do think Clover has half a point. Meaning... That someone did anticipate this pandemic. Well, if the, pandem if the pandemic was presumably intentional, right? A bio-terrorist weapon run by the, the Myrmidons or, or something like that. Then somebody who has intel into that plan would, of course, anticipate the pandemic. That part seems reasonable. Well, if the virus was spread on purpose, then I could see how that might make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like Noah put all the animals on his ark after the flood happened. He went around before the rain started falling to gather them all up. Right? Are you saying that we were rescued because we're all that's left of humanity? We were brought here because someone knew there would be a pandemic that would turn us into an endangered species. Does that mean we're supposed to repopulate the planet? Repopulate Sigma's like, rubbing his hands together like, I could be down for that. <laughs> hmm. I looked around and did a quick inventory. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
four women, an old man, and a kid. That meant I was the only young, fertile male. <laughs> Repopulation, huh? That didn't sound so bad. If that was the case, maybe there wasn't any reason to escape. <laughs> Sigma. <laughs> Classic. If the newspaper and the journal were right, then the world outside was crawling with a deadly virus. Why would we go expose ourselves to that? This would be the safest, happiest place on Earth. The game's over. There's no point to any of this now. No, that's not true. The game might be over, but we still got a lot of unanswered questions. In fact, we've got even more questions. So? Are those answers going to open the number 9 door again? It's all over. Why we're stuck here doesn't mean anything. The eight of us aren't leaving ever. That's all that matters. Eight. You... you're including the old woman? Yeah. Sad. Hey, you know what? What if the old lady is Zero Senior? Yeah, you're right. We never even considered that. But that would mean the person in charge of all this was murdered by somebody. That doesn't make sense. Maybe she wasn't murdered. Huh? Are you saying she was infected with Radical Six? And killed herself? But we didn't find a knife or any kind of weapon in the AV room with her. Maybe she was killed so somewhere else. And then someone carried her in there. What? That's ridiculous. Well, maybe we should go take a look at her one more time. Maybe we missed something. Sure. Okay, I mean, you got plenty of time now, right? We looked down at the body of the old woman. Phi was the first to move. Quietly and methodically, she began to examine the woman and her clothes. I just stood there. Even if she was dead, no, especially because she was dead, I just didn't feel right touching her. After a few silent minutes, Phi suddenly stopped. She pulled something from one of the old woman's sleeves and held it out toward me. A card? It looks like an ID card for this place. Since it's got her picture on it, I'd say it's a safe bet the card is hers. Huh. Looks like her name is... K-U-R-A-S-H-I-K-I. Kurashiki. I think that's... Is that Akane's last name? Kurashiki. Even ever heard it before? Nope. You? No. Anything on the back? Huh? That's the password? There's something written here. It says, Jumpy Doll. Well, actually it says pass equals Jumpy Doll, so I'm guessing Jumpy Doll is a password of some sort. What the heck does that mean? Beats me. Looks handwritten. She must have put it on here herself so she wouldn't forget it. Yeah. We were still looking the card over when I heard a commotion from the other part of the room. Uh, Alice, what's wrong? Alice! Oh no. What are you planning to do with that? Does she have the scalpel? Fine, I turned around and gasped. Darn it. We ran to the other end of the room and skidded around the partition. 
Yup, here we go. There stood Alice, her hand wrapped tightly around the scalpel. She didn't seem stable. Her eyes were flat and hollow. Her face was an emotionless mask. She was not well. The look on her face was all too familiar. Quark. She looked just like Quark had before he went insane. But that meant... Sayonara. Goodbye. Her hand moved, lifting the scalpel up high in the air, then driving it down toward her heart. Yikes, right in the infirmary this time. Wow. So that certainly was an ending. I guess... It, it was a pretty cool ending. I did expect a little bit more info about Quark, though. <laughs> so that's a little bit unfortunate, but um... What a sad ending, too. It's basically, uh, well, you cured one person, but didn't get the big picture well enough, and unfortunately, we're unable to save this other person. What is nice, though, is that we did get a little bit of playtime, even after the number nine door shut, which is cool. And, of course, we found that ID card. Kurashiki. I'm pretty sure that's Akane's last name. I don't remember, though. I think it is. I'm almost tempted to look it up right now. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that and just say, I'm just gonna like Google Akane Kurashiki. Let's see here. Yeah, that is her last name. So it's either Ak it's either somebody related to Akane, obviously. We don't see the first name. So the first thing you think is, oh, it's Akane because they have the same last name. It could just be somebody related to her though. Uh, Temyoji obviously knows the woman, which is a big deal. Also because we know that Temyoji is searching for specifically Akane, um, which supports the idea that, well, that is Akane, right? Interesting. And then of course we have the password for the computer, so now we can jump to that and do that. I thought we actually already had the username at one point. Or maybe it was just that I saw the username briefly in uh, in the intro title or something, or intro sequence or something. But either way, we definitely have enough information for it because we got that specific clue from the two so who was it that said when you encounter the you know two-headed lion or something like that? I think it was uh, was it was it Luna? I think so. Yeah, I think it was Luna who told us that. And now we have the password, so we can log into that and hopefully learn more about Luna, which is pretty exciting. Dang, I feel like these past episodes have all just been one ending after another, which is honestly really nice. Uh, it's, it's been pretty cool because the pacing of this game really dwindled towards the middle of it. But now it's really back up, fired up, and running at a pace that I'm genuinely enjoying. You know, towards the middle of the game I was having to push myself a little bit, as I've mentioned, to record episodes. But now I feel like there's not enough time in a day to, to get all of the recording done I'd like to. But I'm certainly going to try. Uh, I've got a day off, so I'm going to see what I can do. Hopefully my voice permits. But anyways, let's see what this is labeled. I would imagine it's the quark end because we cure quark. Yes. All right. That works. And with that, we should be able to go on over here and figure out the mystery of the two-headed lion. So let's hop into it. Waste no time. These sequences are always pretty cool. So, Memento Mori. Remember death. Memento Mori. Remember. Are they finally going to show the flash of the, the password? Or is it just going to take me to the input screen? Oh, they're actually going to make me go back and check what the ID is. Or did I write it down? I think I wrote it down. Yeah, I think I wrote it down. But that's also not very reassuring for the future when I have these bomb codes to defuse. They're not going to tell me what the codes are. I actually have to write them down. So what do I have written down here? 
GTF DM L and then what? 016. So 016. And then the password is jumpy doll, it seems. I wonder if that's like some sort of reference to Junpei. I don't know. What? That's not it? Oh, the ID is probably... Wait, no, but it said passes Jumpy Doll. So what's the ID then? Did I mess it up somehow? Come on. There's no way I don't have it at this point. I wrote that down, right? GTF and then DM. And then L and then 016. And then the pass should be Jumpy Doll. That's not it. Maybe the zero is an O. GTF DML O and then one six. And the password again, Jumpy Doll. Maybe the pass is actually for one of the bombs? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, guys. So we're gonna get the, the game over we got before. Which is really annoying. But, uh... I'm trying to remember. So the zero bomb was from the Dio end, right? I don't need to save for that. I mean, it's not like there are any other locks to unlock, right? We're at two parts where it's just you have to know the right things. And so I'm trying to remember the ID for the pass or, or the ID for the thing. I'm pretty certain in this other ending, we don't know the bomb number three deactivation code. The Alice end is the one, or no, there's the Sigma end where, let me, let me see here. Well, let's jump to this real quick. If you find the two-headed lion or whatever, right? So let's let's click through this real quick and speed things along, just to confirm. Okay, let's see here. Please pay attention. This is very important. You must be sure to remember it. Okay. Should you encounter a two-headed lion devouring the sun, remember. GTF DM L016. Right? Interesting. So, I just had one thought. So, first of all, this is what I wrote down. And I would imagine this is this is what we need to remember, right? GTF DM L016. I don't really know. Oh, Wait a minute. Uh, no, I don't think that works. So 016, isn't that what we saw written on Clover, was it? During that timeline where I think Clover and Temyoji were handcuffed together? I think so. But GTF DML 016. With this key, the first gate shall be open to you. So that must not be... That must not be it, I guess. If that's not the username though, what is? Did we find it before? Oh man, maybe I'm gonna have to do some digging to see where we found the, the various bomb passwords too. I'm really annoyed that the game isn't keeping track of them for me. 
So I remember we got one from the Dio end. I think that was the zero bomb. We got this thing for the... I'll, I'll write down that it's for the first gate, I guess. Maybe I need to go back to Clover in that ending where she died? This is the Clover end. That's the one where everybody gets... it's like a bloodbath. I don't remember where to go back to now. The Clover game over. It had to have been one of the earlier ones, right? The director's office. Bomb number one. Deactivation code. Do we earn... do we get that? What is it? I'm trying to remember. Do we have it? Oh, I see. Okay, so the bomb number one code. Alright, I'll write this down. I don't know if I'm going to be... I probably will be doing some editing to facilitate this process, but... Here's the first one, RGJ and then DXR. So that's the bomb number two code. Okay, let's go back to the flow chart, see what else we can find. Round ally, the Tenmyoji end, betray. I don't remember which one was the one where, was that the K end? I think it was. If you find the two-headed lion. Okay, so this is the key to gate two. It seems these things are at least labeled on the flowchart, so I can look around like that. Leave it here. Alright, let's see here. Hmm. It's also interesting, who did he make a promise to, right? To find this and remember these letters. M I L K E V O L I. And so that's supposedly the second gate. So maybe the first one is the username and the second one is the password, but but I was almost certain the password was jumpy doll, right? Hmm. We obviously have the nine digit code that's the key to the password, or the key to the, the code for Dio and everything going on there. The, the message that was sent as well was completed, that's all, they're all nine letters. So, okay. So now that we've got that, let's see where else we can find things. Bomb number zero deactivation code. I guess I'll write this one down while we're at it. <laughs> so let's see. Here we go. Hmm. Now we really are, this is crazy, as Sigma, we're kind of, we're really jumping around all over the timelines, assembling our information again. She swung the rock down, and then... Here we go, come on. Okay, number zero bomb. L-X-A-Q-N-S-G-D-Q. Okay. Thank you, Dio. I'll be on my way now. <laughs> so, let's see here. Where else can we find it? Was it here? Or down here? I don't think so. What's the long string of numbers? Warehouse B. We got the bomb number three deactivation code. It was all the way over here. I didn't remember which ones we'd gotten. <laughs> Wow, that was probably frustrating for you guys to watch. Well, at least these are labeled on the, you know, on the flowchart. That makes a huge difference. I thought he gave us the number two one. Dang. Alright.
Okay, here we go. Okay. Zip. So number three. L X Q L H C N M R. And so with that, we should be able to do everything, right? I'm also going to reiterate again how silly it is that they're making me write down these passwords instead of just keeping track of them in the game itself. But So we know the pass is Jumpy Doll. We know there is a first and second gate should we run into the computer, right? And we have the nine letter or nine digit strings for that. And then we have the four bomb passwords. The one bit of information we don't have is where is the zero bomb, right? So I think that's what we're going to find out in this timeline. So let's head back here and see if we can use the first gate and second gate information as the username and password. I'm not entirely sure that that'll be the case, but we, um, I want to give it a go. Maybe we'll find out the username and password while finding, while disarming the bombs in the other timeline. I don't know, but let's see here. So if the first gate is GTF, D, M, L, and then 016, they made it very clear it was a zero, not a one, or not an O. And then the password, let's try M, I, L, K, E, V, O, L, I. That's it. I, so I obviously have a couple complaints about this. Um, notably that they give me a password, pass jumpy doll, that it clearly is not the password for this, um, and that they refer to a first gate and a second gate instead of just username and password or something like that. Um, I kind of wish they were a little bit more straightforward about which numbers go to which. I obviously made the, the mistake of forgetting all of the, the bomb codes and stuff and assuming the game would keep track of them for me, but... All that aside, we're finally in the computer. And notably, Captain Kid stands out on screen. <laughs> Shout out to Ryuji. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Fi, come come over here. What's wrong? I, I got in. What? How did you figure out the login? I, I don't know. I just... I just knew it. What the heck do you mean you just knew it? I just knew it means I just knew it. You gave me the same line when I asked you how you knew my name. Why are you bringing that up? It doesn't have anything to do with this. You sure? It might. What? I don't... Uh, look, just forget about that. Come take a look at this. Sure. Fine. Just let me get right on that. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Tell me what the heck is going on here. Why do you know how to log into this computer? Are you even listening to me? <laughs> we continue to yell at one another for several more minutes. No matter what Fi asked me, I could never come up with an answer that satisfied her. Eventually, she seemed to give up. Fine. You still don't make any sense, but... I don't think you're lying. Darn right I'm not. And the AB game deadline isn't getting any further away. Alright, let's see what this thing has for us. Where are we supposed to start? It looks like there's tons of stuff in here. Oh, can you tell me the ID that you put in? I can try searching for that. Maybe we'll get a hit. I gave her what she'd asked for, GTFDML016. Her search returned several files, and after examining them for a moment, Fi opened one. Golem unit details. Are these product specifications for a golem? Looks like it. So, was GTFDML016 a golem's ID? 
Don't ask me. <laughs> you seem to know more about all this than I do. True, true. Fine, whatever. Just read the file. Maybe it'll make more sense. Let's see here. <gasps> what? Luna's a golem? Luna is a golem? Oh my god. So there's a lot going on here, right? The first of which is... Luna's a golem. The second of which is... The 016 written on Clover, was that something related to Luna killing people? I don't know. I mean, we've seen Luna be calm and emotionless, almost robot-like in other timelines, too. We also see that she's incredibly passive. If she's truly a golem being controlled peripherally by Zero Jr. and consequently Zero Senior, that might explain why she's so eager to let other people make the big decisions in the games, right? It would also explain why she's so familiar with the concept of other people could be robots just with all of this, you know, artificial body tissue or whatever it's called, biological tissue on them. It also explains maybe why she's so hesitant to share her past, because she doesn't really have much of one. Luna. Yeah. Why is there a picture of Luna in this file? There's something written underneath it. It says appearance after application of ABT. ABT? ABT? There's this special artificial biological tissue, what's called ABT. When a golem's all new and shiny, they've got an on a nice suit of ABT over that metal skeleton. Makes us look right human, it does. Even feels like real skin with pores, a little bit of hair, and a few pimples, scars, and the like. Oh man, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the conversation we had with Luna about the the bird in the cage. Because I'm sure that would be really important to recall right now. Maybe it's something I'll even go back and look over briefly. Truth to tell, I doubt you'd be able to tell the real from the fake, even if it was right in front of you. See, you're right in the middle of... You guys. Yeah. I see. Luna was a golem. Oh, was she killed? In this timeline? I think so, right? Is this the one where Luna... I think it is, where Luna and Alice were both killed in the crew quarters? And DML-016 was her product ID. That must have been what Golem was trying to tell us when he was stopped. Hmm. But why? Why would Luna be in the game? Hmm. I don't know how autonomous she really is, but I find it hard to believe she would have come here of her own free will. So you're saying she was sent here by Zero Senior? Probably. Look. At the bottom of the screen it shows her current status. Currently operational. Executing special mission. You think her special mission is to participate in the game? Probably. So why did Zero Senior want a robot as a participant? You think maybe it was to supervise the rest of us? Maybe if something unexpected happened, she was supposed to correct it or something? What if it was some kind of voight Kampf test? What? A what? It's from an old book, a test to see how human she was. Whether or not eight people would be able to figure out she was a robot. 
これまでにゲームをさせてきた理由もわからないでもない。That might almost explain the whole game, actually. 室内のパズルを解かせたり、駆け引きが必要な AB ゲームをやらせたり。Making us solve puzzles and play the AB game? それらの一つ一つが、ルナの人間らしさを見極めるための判断材料になっていたのかも。All of those things could have been designed to give us a chance to see her true nature. So it's kind of like the Chinese room. そうだな。Yeah. Luna is the girl locked in the room. And the eight of us are the people outside it. Hmm. Oh, like I always say, it's just a possibility, right? All what matters is if the person next to you does what a human ought. Looks like a person, acts like a person, and talks like a person. Then it's probably a person. When did you figure it out? That she was a golem, I mean. Right now. I didn't know until I saw this stuff. You're lying. When I told you about what happened with G or with Golem in the pantry, you said something about how this game might be some sort of, like the Ch might be some sort of like the Chinese room. I don't know why I said that. It just felt like it made sense. Like you just knew it. Yeah. No. Look, forget about that. See Luna's status? Yeah, it says the same thing it did a minute ago. Currently operational. Executing special mission. Whoa! Wait, what the heck? Luna's dead! You think robots die? She was only injected with muscle relaxing. <laughs> Which isn't gonna relax somebody who has muscles. Or right, who doesn't have muscles, right? So maybe Luna went about killing Clover and Tenmyoji. And is it is this the timeline? No, I don't think it's that timeline. Um but in that other timeline, I think the K game over ending or the K end is the one where Presumably, Quark is the only person who could potentially be alive and out and about running around doing things. We found K and Dio had killed each other, but presumably Luna could also still be alive and doing things, right? Ambidex game, Tohyo no Shimekiri Made, Nokori, Jipun, this. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Of course! Luna's the one who opened the AV gate. That might not be the only thing she did. Look, what do you mean? What are the last three digits of her product ID? 016. And where have we seen that before? Yeah, there we go. No. No, I don't believe it. Are you saying it was Luna who handcuffed Clover and Temyoji? We should go check her body. You remember where it is? The crew quarters. Of course I remember. Oh boy. So this is that timeline. Where that happened. Oh man. No Luna. We were right. Yeah. Why? Why would Luna... And I... I trust him. What is her special mission that killing Temyoji and Clover makes sense, right? And whoever started the AB game must be Luna, but why? Right? That's the big question. What is the special mission? What's the motivation? Why? Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. 
Let's go. The game hasn't stopped. If we don't vote, we're going to get penalized. Right. Off we go then. Wow. Wow. Why would Luna be motivated to kill? Was it retaliation of some sort? Some semblance of human-like activity? Invalid pair detected. Please retry with valid partner. Oh yeah, forgot about this thing. Right, Luna's bracelet. Oh, so she presumably can't even participate without that. Yeah, with her bracelet, there's three in this room. I stepped outside and set Luna's bracelet down, then headed back into the AV room. Two minutes remain. Alright, I'll go ahead and hit the start button. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Who are we... I don't even know who we're playing against. Wait. Sigma. Huh? Luna? And then the door closes. Oh man, this music is so menacing. We only have one minute left. Wait, 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 wait. What the heck is going on? Why is Luna here? She's probably planning on participating in the game. You mean she's gonna take the bracelet and go into one of the other rooms? Yeah. How is she going to vote? Betray? I'm sure of it. Why else would she have come here? If she wanted to vote ally, she could have just waited for the deadline to pass. She's got 7 BP, right? Yeah. Why are you asking, though? Her BP doesn't matter right now. What? Have you totally lost it? She doesn't have her bracelet on. And besides, she's a golem. She isn't trying to get out. Whether she has 9 BP or not doesn't mean anything to her. Then why is she doing this? Isn't that obvious? She wants to keep our BP below 9. Say she defaulted to ally. We could choose whatever we wanted and we'd still get 9 BP. She's here to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, that's a compelling argument. Oh, that's a really, really compelling argument, Fi. I don't know what to do. If Luna presumably killed Clover and Tenyoji and has a special mission oh man that doesn't paint a good picture of her motivations here and like I like I've been saying five makes a really valid argument for why Luna would even show up in the first place the only thing I can maybe rebut with is well what if she anticipated meeting us here and wanted to talk for some reason. She didn't show up to actually participate in the AB game, but knew that this would be a good place to, well, find both of us. I don't know. Has, has Luna ever chosen Betray? Whenever she's had the chance, I mean, there have been times where we voted with her, but she hasn't taken any sort of authority to prevent whoever our partner is from, or whoever our opponent is, from reaching 9 BP. I don't know if she's actually programmed or designed in such a way that she wants to keep people below 9. Aw, oh, man. 
It's just like, every time I betray Luna, I feel like crap. <laughs> I feel so awful. <sighs> what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Ah, uh, we're picking ally because we're stupid. <laughs> really, betray is the better move here. Betray is without a doubt the better move here. But I just, I have to pick ally. Betray definitely makes so much more sense here though. It's a safe option. Neither of us is gonna die if either of us loses points, right? If we lose points, we're back at five. And well, eh, I mean, if we both betray, we're at zero. If Luna picks ally, which is super unlikely, then she gets to nine points if we pick, or we get to nine if she gets, all that stuff. We get to nine pretty much no matter what if she picks ally. It's just a matter of whether or not she gets to nine with us. Oh man, but if we pick ally and she chooses betray, that ain't good. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen, guys. I really don't. I'm so nervous. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Is it even safe to leave the AB room? Is Luna gonna try to kill us? How do we interact with Luna when we walk out of this AB room and wait for the results to display, right? Like, there's, there's just so much complicated. I don't know how I'm gonna handle it. But however we do handle it is gonna be found out in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. There were some real bombs here, right? Luna is a golem, which is crazy. Luna's potentially responsible for Clover and Tenmyoji's death in this timeline? What? What is her special mission? Why is she still, you know, participate or trying to participate in an AB game, potentially? Is she going to pick Betray or Ally? Is her goal to actually keep us from getting to 9? And are we going to have some sort of altercation when we leave the AB room and we potentially discover... Or Luna knows that we have found out her true motives. I don't know. Is Luna even aware we accessed the computer? She, for all we know, she could have no idea we have this information. Yet on the other hand, given she's a golem with access to a base that's, you know, a body of knowledge run by Zero Junior, she could know that her files were accessed, right? I, I have no idea. But I hope you guys are looking for the next episode just as much as I am. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero. And this mission is complete.